Sorry, I'm having a little miscall with the meeting. Okay. yesterday as well. Okay, so my line is now unmuted. Thank you for that, Miranda. So just a moment, this happened yesterday as well. Apologies for the delay. So Miranda, are you able to bring up the slides for me? Yes, I can. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you for bearing with us. We tested and it didn't work. Um, so I will go ahead and begin. My name is Siri Kushner, and I am the data and analytics lead for the Olympic Community of Health contracted through Kitsap Public Health District. And just so that everyone on the webinar knows, we have muted your lines. And if you have any comments or questions along the way, please go ahead and use the chat box. Miranda will be observing, watching that box, and we'll pause if we need to along the way. Otherwise, we can address questions at the end. Um, other staff on the line today, Elliot Brzezowski, Executive Director of the Olympic Community of Health. Um, Jury John is not uh, present on the webinar today. Miranda Berger is the Program Coordinator, and Phil Ramuno, our uh, Epidemiologist through Kitsap Public Health. Next slide. One, sorry, now it's not advancing. There we go. Okay, so <clears throat> the goal of our webinar today is for you to understand the process that the OCH has used to develop quantitative metrics that are part of the monitoring of the implementation of the OCH change plan. And we need to note that this webinar is not going to be an exhaustive review of each metric, um, but it is more about the process and to orient you to uh, the metric documents <clears throat> and to invite you to review those and to submit comments or questions to us um, over the next week and a half uh, before, before we finalize the uh, measures document. Next slide. So I'll briefly go over the process of how we got here. There may be some of you on the phone who, have, who could actually give this part of the webinar. Um, and others of you who are newer to the process. So we wanna make sure that we bring everybody up to speed uh, very briefly on how we got to where we are today. Uh, we will review the elements of change plan implementation monitoring. Um, I'll introduce the Performance Measurement and Evaluation Committee of the Olympic Community of Health, who are um, the brains that help to put together the intermediary document, uh, met metric documents that you are reviewing. Um, we will briefly, review the ORCA Olympic Reporting Community Activities platform, which is where these measures will be reported. Um, and then we'll look at timelines and have some time for questions if there are any at the end. Next slide. So the Olympic Community of Health work began uh, before November of 2016, but as an 
sort of base milestone, uh, the regional health needs assessment, a collection of uh, data and input from community partners is where um, the work that evolved into the change plans really began. In 2017, areas of focus, March, early 2017, areas of focus were established. By the end of 2017, the OCH submitted a project plan to the Health Washington State Healthcare Authority, which comprised six of the eight possible Medicaid transformation projects. Um, and those were then transitioned into um, work that would be done regionally in the NCCs, the Natural Communities of Care, which represent uh, work in the Clallam, Jefferson, and Kitsap regional areas. And over the summer, the physical health behavioral health change plans were developed, followed by the community-based organization and social services change plan in September of 2018. Next slide. So these six projects that the Olympic Community of Health chose to um, work on, two are uh, work are uh, what's the word uh, required across Washington State. Uh, project 2A, the bidirectional integration of physical and behavioral health through care transformation, as well as Project 3A, addressing the opioid use public health crisis. And of the optional projects, Kitsap chose, excuse me, OCH chose diversion interventions, reproductive and maternal child health, access to oral health services, and chronic disease prevention and control. And the approach the OCH took was um, to combine these six projects into integrated care plans that are comprised of four domains, with activities and outcomes within those, care coordination, care integration, care transformation, and care infrastructure. And the physical health, behavioral health change plans um, are comprised of elements within all four of those domains. And the community-based organization and social services change plan has elements and activities within the care coordination and the care infrastructure domain. Next slide. So in general, the monitoring approach for the Olympic Community of Health change plans has multiple elements to it, some of which um, are external data sources, which are depicted in the implementation monitoring diagram in the far, in the bottom right. The Health Washington State Healthcare Authority, the HCA, is one data source that we will be using over time, um, primarily derived from uh, data that are submitted through Medicaid claims. In addition, we have monitoring data through the Department of Social and Health Services and their Research and Data Analysis Division, as well as data from the Department of Health. In orange, our, medic, our managed care organizations are also, um, we are in conversations uh, to understand what sort of data they may be able to share with us and on what frequency to be able to monitor implementation of the change plan work. Um, the OCH partner report, that's the area that we'll be focusing on today, and I will come back to that in a moment. Um, and then the three other sources on the right side, the APCD is the all-payer claims database, which we have a contract with Public Health Seattle King County to run analyses and to help us understand, um, again, through a different lens and through different analytics, um, uh, opportunities for tracking uh, data through the claims uh, system again. Our CORA, our data through oral health data, formerly known as the Washington Dental Service Foundation, and finally, the Salish Behavioral Health Organization, our regional behavioral health uh, provider. So we're going to focus on one section of the OCH partner report uh, data. If you click again, there we go. So there are four elements to reporting uh, by our change plan implementation partners to the Olympic Community of Health. If we start in the upper left, the progress updates, these are going to be biannual updates um, on each of the outcomes that you selected in your change plan. And they follow, or you will be giving us updates on your uh, progress or your status at six different stages through beginning at not started, it's not an outcome that you've started through, you're in the planning phase, the testing phase, you have limited implementation, you're fully implemented. Uh, and then finally, you've reached a point where you are scaling and sustaining that work. 
in the bottom left, there will be biannual site visits by OCH staff uh, to your organization to have a conversation and to learn from you your stories, your challenges, your successes, ways that technical assistance or other shared opportunities would support your work. In the upper right, uh, the narrative is will go hand in hand with the progress update, and it will be a biannual reporting uh, based on six questions, which are broadly, um, the broad categories for those questions are, what tactics have you been working on, which, or which priority tactics have you been working on, which barriers and what kinds of barriers have you been running into, are there assistance or technical assistance needs that you may have, have you engaged in new partnerships, what is the status of your current partnerships, um, around health equity, what initiatives, what work are you doing, what successes or challenges are you having with health equity, and with your value-based uh, purchasing contracts. And then in the bottom right, this is the work that we're going to focus on today, which are the quantitative metrics. And I'll explain how these metrics were derived. Um, they are uh, designed to drive towards the OCH 14 core measures, which I will introduce to you on the next slide. And they're organized into categories of primary care, hospital, mental health, substance use disorder, and community-based organization and social services. Next slide. The 14 OCH core measures were developed over the summer by the OCH Sunflow Work Group. And the purpose of these measures was to understand a subset of the overall measure portfolio and profile that we are um, being assessed on and tracking through the Medicaid transformation along with all of our other ACH partners. And to identify measures that are within value-based purchasing contracts already or are measures that organizations are already mandated to report and to track within other kinds of contracting um, through contracts both within the state and um, through uh, federal and other grant opportunities. So there was a, a set of criteria that were developed in each of the measures and a broad measure set that we uh, obtained from the healthcare authority. Um, we looked at measures based on whether they are associated with value-based base payment now or in the future through integrate, integrated managed care, and those were given a high priority. We looked, we gave a preference to our own fund flow work group uh, based on whether they felt that some of the measures were um, of, of greater importance to the specific work within uh, the change plans. We looked at what Medicaid managed care organizations are currently measuring from providers here in our Olympic region. We looked at the pay for performance measures, which are part of the Medicaid transformation portfolio through uh, the healthcare authority that we are already bound to. We looked at what some of the commercial payers in our region are looking at. We looked at the elements of the Olympic Community of Health Medicaid Transformation Project Transformation Vision Statement. Um, and finally, in the end, when we had assessed each of the measures within uh, the matrix on these criteria, we looked to see if there were any elements that were missing um, from the final and highest ranking measures. Next slide. So a total of 18 measures uh, came to the top. Uh, we call them 14 core because four of the measures are um, associated as a comprehensive diabetes slate. So those measures we count uh, as one, um, but in total there are 18 measures. They fall within three groups, integration, access, and value-based contracting. And there were two measures in that final category on the criteria slide. Um, where I explained that we looked at the, at the measures that reached the top and looked for any holes, and there were two that were added in, psychiatric hospital readmission rate and utilization of dental services by Medicaid beneficiaries. So these are the 14 core measures with, that the OCH has crosswalked to uh, the work within the change plan, and these are the, the basis for which our implementation metrics are um, set and um, these are the measures to which we are driving. Next slide.
so gave you a moment to read the fine print. Um, not, I didn't. It, this slide is not intended for you to read the fine print, but this is our crosswalk of the required outcomes within the change plan. If you're familiar with the change plan, there are some outcomes that are optional and others that are required. And this is just the crosswalk of the required outcomes by those 14 uh, core measures to see the overlap and where we feel that um, the outcomes will be um, helping, uh, helping to um, improve, make improvements, and drive change around those core measures. Next slide. So the Performance Measurement and Evaluation Committee, otherwise known as the PMAC, was convened in August of this year, and they have their first major task was to work on developing the metric set uh, for monitoring implementation of the change plan, the quantitative measures. They have a role uh, as um, recommend, uh, to provide recommendations to the Olympic Committee of Health Board of Directors and to advise the Board of Directors on data functions, um, and specifically those are around assessment, measurement, monitoring, data management, et cetera. Next. Uh, these are the members of the PMAC committee, and we are very appreciative of the time. It was uh, five meetings over the last two months to really dig in and think uh, carefully and strategically around um, opportunities for tracking data. You can click, Miranda. And we had some high-level um, sort of goals around what we were doing in terms of minimizing reporting burden, not trying to create a whole new set of um, indicators to be tracking, but enough that we are ensuring accountability and that we're supporting our providers and that this process can support providers to build capacity around reporting and performing under uh, value-based care. Next slide. So the high-level timeline for metric development was the identification of the core measures in July by the Funds Flow Workgroup followed by convening of the PMAC committee and their multiple meetings to design uh, the intermediary measures that were released late on Wednesday. And uh, from there, next slide, we have a, a high level description of what that measure set looks like. So the purpose is that these are the quantitative measures which will help us to understand the process of change plan implementation. As I described on the slide with the circle with the four quadrants, this is one piece of, of measurement and monitoring um, for the OCH approach. These are really uh, indicators that we are going to be um, collecting two times a year by annual reporting, but we really believe that many of these are things that internally within your own internal processes maybe elements that you will track and, and monitor on a much more frequent basis, monthly or quarterly, to understand your own implementation and your own change over time and opportunities for quality improvement. A process measure, within, within our quantitative measures, we have two kinds of measures. A process measure is really an element of infrastructure and procedure, and an intermediary is, measure is defined as an outcome that precedes or predicts one of the OCH core measures. And the measures within the metric set are numbers. Some of them are just a count of something. They can be a calculated percent uh, that we will obtain through a reported numerator and denominator, or there are some that are attestations. They may just be a yes, no answer. In the calendar invite, and again, repeated in an email yesterday morning, we sent out eight PDF files. And one of the files is called master. And the master has all of the measures that are in this quantitative intermediary measure set. And it, it, it identifies whether that measure uh, is going to be assigned to hospital, primary care, mental health, substance use disorder, and or the CBOS partner change plans. Within, that, um, within those documents that we attached, then there are also subset documents that have just the measures that are currently assigned to, on the left column, hospital, primary care, primary care, integrated primary care with mental health and substance use disorder services, mental health, substance use disorder, 
mental health and substance use disorder combined, and then the community-based organization social services measures. So the crosswalk in this table is to help you understand which change plan types and which measure set you, may, you should look at. This is a, a screenshot of uh, the master document. So on the far left, in the first column, each of the measure groups is organized by topic, behavioral health, uh, care utilization, or utilization management, physical health, um, dental health, social determinants of health. And the OCH core measure, one of those 14 measures is in the second column, and there are multiple intermediary measures within that, within each of those. So in this case, if we look at where it says mental health treatment penetration, there are three measures within that we have identified that drive towards that uh, core measure. And if we look across the page to the right, so there's a description, and then there is the specific language for the numerator. And in this case, there are no denominators associated with the intermediary measures. That's why it says NA. And then on the far right, the Xs indicate which of the provider types or partner types will have that measure as part of their measure set. Next slide. This is an example of just a subset of measures that are associated with substance use disorder. So across the left, you can see the categories, all behavioral health, utilization management, physical health, and social determinants of health. And then across the page, you can see the measures. Their measure type, whether it's a number, an attestation would be a yes or no, or a percentage would indicate that we would be expecting a numerator and a denominator from which we would calculate a percent and then across the page, the measure description, and then the specific definitions of the numerator and the denominator for each of the measures. An important note, which we uh, didn't mention yesterday, but had a question, and so I wanna make sure I say this today, depending on the uh, subpopulations or the tactics that you chose in your change plan, there may be some measures that do not apply to your organization. So just because you're looking at the SUD measure subset, for example, there could be, I don't know if there is one in here, but there could be a subpopulation or something specific to a group of individuals who you don't serve. Next slide. So we have one additional request. There's a set of measures within, uh, well, there's a subset of the, OC, of the OCH core measures, which are listed here which are ones that we are hoping will be able to save everyone some energy and effort um, by having our partners tell us which ones they may already be reporting to MCOs or receiving reports back from MCOs um, because these are elements within their value-based contracts or otherwise. So we will be preparing and sending out later today a document to our primary care partners only um, to tell us about their um, availability of any of these measures in information that they are already submitting to their MCOs or in information that they are already receiving back. So stay tuned for more to come on that for our primary care change plan partners. So ORCA, the Olympic Reporting, community act reporting and Community Activities is our online platform where your change plans live in their electronic format. It is also the place where you will be doing your reporting. So you will be doing your biannual reporting on your outcomes, those six stages that I went through. The six narrative questions will also live within ORCA. And your reporting on these quantitative metrics will also be an element of ORCA. ORCA is also a place where you can access resources and collaborate with your other natural community of care partners. If you do not have a login to ORCA, if you don't know what ORCA is or are not familiar with ORCA or need any help, please email Miranda at olympicch.org and she can help you get connected to ORCA or help you connect with someone in your organization who may already have access. And this will be important because we will need to have you report into ORCA 
and Miranda, at the end of the webinar, will go over um, the opportunity for you to do your final review of your change plan, which you will need to do in ORCA. Next slide. So this is an example of a data entry screen um, for a different organization. The vendor, the contractor who we're using to, um, who has developed the, the platform, our name for it is ORCA, that is not its name nationwide, but there are many organizations who um, are using the same platform. So this is just an example of what your screen may look like. Um, where you have the measure description, here's BP control, blood pressure control, and then you have two rows for the numerator and one for the denominator where you would enter your values, 20 and 100, and then the system would calculate the percent for you as 20%. So we anticipate, we have not yet built this. Once we finalize the measures, we will submit them to uh, the contractor for them to actually build our data entry screen. So we don't have ours yet, but we anticipate it would look very similar to this. So this is our timeline. Um, last Friday, the PMAC finished their hard, hard work on developing this measure set that you have in your um, calendar invite or in your inbox. And we were able to release those measures on Wednesday, late on Wednesday. Thank you very much for being present today and for those who were present yesterday on very short notice. Um, to, to participate in this webinar and to get a high-level overview of our process and of uh, the intention of those measures and to understand the setup of the measures. Um, we have an open comment period through the 26th of November, which is the Monday after Thanksgiving at the end of the day. Um, if you have any comments, I believe on the next slide or the slide after that, it is my email address and we would appreciate hearing anything um, if you have questions or comments. We will compile a, um, FAQs uh, and submit that or send that out um, to folks so that you can see what others have asked and how we've answered. Over Tuesday the 27th and Wednesday the 28th, we will prepare the final measure set. And on Thursday the 29th, we will release those final measures for your review. You will have until the 12th excuse me, the 14th of December, December 14th, uh, to review your change plan on ORCA after reviewing the measures and to make any final changes and any final reviews. And then your change plans will be locked Friday the 14th of December. Your change plans will be locked for the year. And I think there are, there's some information here on the payment timeline and um, just to say again that we will, CSI is the name of the vendor and they will be building these measures into our ORCA platform and we anticipate having baseline, requesting baseline values in February. More information on that to come. Next slide. So the reporting schedule, quantitative data are those that we have discussed today. As I just mentioned, we'll be requesting the baseline data in February of 2019. And we anticipate the six month calendar being March, six month calendar for reporting being March and September reporting on those quantitative measures. For the progress to date, which is the narrative responses and those um, six stages on your outcomes, we're looking at um, requesting the baseline data in December of 2018, and the biannual reporting would be in June and December of each year. You can anticipate um, hearing from Juri and Miranda to begin scheduling the first site visit, which should occur in the beginning two months of the year, and your second site visit would be over the summer. Next slide. And now Miranda is going to walk through the slides. Good afternoon, everyone. This is Miranda Berger. Um, so I just really quickly want to thank you for attending today and talk a little bit about the next steps after the your review of the PMEC measures. So um, we are requesting that you review those measures and report your feedback to Siri 
uh, by Monday the 26th so that we have time to prepare the final set for your release. Once the final release comes out on the 29th, we are asking that you go back into your change plan and amend any of your outcomes or tactics based on that final measure set if you feel like it is necessary. Um, at the same time, we're also asking for you to review and edit your start and target dates for your selected outcomes uh, to make sure that they are accurate as we will be using that information moving forward with the first progress to date reporting and OCH site visits. We're also asking that you report your baseline progress to date. Um, I will be releasing an email this afternoon with very detailed um, instructions on how to do that. And again, um, I know I have personally been in touch with some of you um, as you've been orienting yourself to ORCA and I'm happy to be available if anyone has any questions or concerns moving through that process of doing the first reporting. Um, just really quickly, there is a screenshot here in the same tab where you access your change plan. There is a tab that says progress to date. That's where you'll click. It automatically populates all of your outcomes you've selected and you will do that drop down menu um, on those six stages of progress. And then at the bottom are those six narrative questions. You will need to repeat that process um, for each domain that you have outcomes in. And um, an update for our CBOS change plan partners. I um, will be entering your change plans that you provided to us into ORCA on your behalf next week. And those will be ready for your um, review on 1126 of Monday after Thanksgiving. So you will have an opportunity to go in, ensure that it's been entered accurately and correctly, um, and move forward with this first reporting process um, as you do that as well. Thank you, Miranda. So with that, we would invite any comments or questions at this time. And uh, if you do not have any at this time and you find when you are looking at the measures that you have questions, this is my contact information. I am happy to talk to you on the phone, orient you to the document. I know it is a lot of information and uh, I would be happy to um, provide that orientation or if you'd like to submit a question, we will compile an answer and get that back to you. And if anybody would like to ask a question verbally, Miranda can unmute the line. Yes, I, I will do it now. Sorry, did I interrupt you, buddy? So everyone is now unmuted. Okay, I'm muting you, everyone again. We're getting some feedback, so if everyone can please take a minute to make sure that your line is muted. I'm gonna unmute everybody um, so that you have the opportunity to ask questions, but please only unmute yourself if you're asking a question. This is Janelle, can you hear me? Yes, thanks yes, Janelle. Hi, I um. I joined a little bit late and I have um, one of my staff members that um, would, other than myself, would really benefit from this presentation. Do you, will, you, will the slides and whatnot be available afterwards? Yes, Janelle, yes. I have recorded the webinar. Okay, great. So I will be sending that out in a follow-up email and we can also send out the slides as well. Fabulous, thank you so much. Any other comments or questions? Go ahead. Yeah, this is Gary. Um, so in the um, definition of the numerators where it says, um, during the current reporting period who were not seen previously, 
So not mm-hmm. seen previously, meaning brand new to the system, um, not seen by that provider or that clinic. Uh, those are very good questions, Gary. And maybe I'm, I'm not looking at the specific measure in front of you, but why don't you send that in an email and we can go ahead and address that. I think that those clarifications um, we'll need to include exclusions and inclusions to help make that clear. Thank you. Okay, thanks. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Okay. So hearing no one, we had a similar situation yesterday. I know that this information just came to you and we completely understand um, that many of you may not have had a chance to review it. So please do take us up on the opportunity um, to talk through it with you and uh, we appreciate any feedback you can provide. We're trying to make this the most streamlined and efficient and understandable for each of you um, as our partners. So thank you for your time today. And uh, we hope that you have a great weekend and please keep in touch. Thank you.